The Crypto Markets Update is brought to you by KuCoin, the best place to find the next crypto gem. Sorry, going back to that. Okay, today we have the view from Japan from our next guest, Taka Akikato, who is the head of global, the global head of sales and trading at Bitflyer, one of Japan's largest crypto exchanges. Welcome. Hey, good morning. Good evening. So it's always great to have the view from Japan. Japan is one of the most important crypto markets in the world. So if we could just start with that, just telling us a little bit about what the mood is like there. The mood in the U.S. in the crypto world is pretty bad. Um, you know, Japan <laughs> is a different environment. Um, what's just, what, what's the view from one of the largest exchanges in Japan? Sure. Um, so this week uh, in Okinawa, there's actually a big uh, Web3 conference. So again, uh, I think the Web3 and the NFT uh, crowd is really kind of getting into it. Um, and, you know, uh, this always continued interest in Japan uh, on large moves. Uh, historically, what we do find uh, in Japan is, uh, you know, I still remember the day when we broke 18,000, you know, and we could see the flows coming into the market. Japanese retail tend to be pretty sizable buyers uh, on large moves. Um, but when the market's kind of moving sideways, uh, they, they tend to be relatively quiet and they don't like to chase the markets, but they did do tend to uh, become a pretty good backstop uh, in times of stress. So that's something we have seen uh, on down days. Well, so you have a very unique perspective because you can actually, you're actually at one of these exchanges and again, one of the biggest ones where you can sort of see this trade happening. Now, Japan, as I understand it, is a primarily retail market. It's almost an entirely retail market, right? It's not, there's not a lot of institutional investors in crypto. What are you seeing among retail investors in Japan? I mean, are they still very active? Are you seeing a slowdown? Um, what's, what's, what's happening in that area? Sure. Um, if we look at our volumes, probably in line with you know many of our global peers, uh, you know they're down you know anywhere between call it thirty to sixty percent. Um, so you know we're, we're seeing the same effects, but um, you know the moves tend to be fairly uh, chunky. So what we do see, as I mentioned, uh, larger and increased size moves um, whenever uh, the markets tend to crash. They tend to be sort of buy and hold. Um, we do see uh, a lot of um, you know. Uh, accumulation type strategies uh, as well. So, um, you know, there, the level of, I guess, uh, uh, interest in crypto has been relatively uh, consistent and stable. That's good to hear. I'm glad to hear that's true, at least somewhere. Um, so uh, another question more on the regulatory side. You know, Japan is probably one of the more strict crypto jurisdictions in the world, um, in particular from the exchange side when it comes to listing tokens. You know, as, as far as I understand, Japan has like a white list of tokens. So, you know, there's only a certain amount of tokens that are actually able to be listed in Japan. This is very different from a lot of other countries, in, including the U.S. And um, Japan in the past has been criticized within Japan for being too strict on crypto, right? And kind of suffocating the industry. But here in the U.S., we're sort of seeing the opposite thing where we're kind of seeing a lot of gray areas in regulation and a lot of entities are imploding. So I guess my question is, like, is Japan kind of getting the last laugh here? Like, should the U.S. be taking a page out of <laughs> Japan's book? Like, would we be better off with, like, a whitelist for tokens or, like, strict government management? I mean, what, I'm just curious, are there lessons from Japan for the U.S.? So take a step back. I mean, in you know, 2018 is where the, when the regulation kicked in. Um, so I was in TradFi post Lehman, and you know, and the crackdown on Wall Street uh, was obviously pretty harsh. Um, but the same thing happened to crypto in Japan back in 2018. So you know, as a firm, we've spent the last three um, three years plus, almost four, really playing defense and really building up our compliance, our AML, CFT. Um, you know, and really uh, creating what is essentially the same structure as we would in TradFi. So we are regulated pretty much like a bank. Um, and in many ways, uh, it's, it's even tougher and, and harsher um, because you're taking, uh, I guess, the strictness that they apply to the financial sector and then adding crypto on top of it. Um, so we've been facing that for quite a while. Um, and so we have a very stable balance sheet um, and, you know, and the rules and regulations are already there. So in reality, there's not anything incrementally new. So from here, the interesting thing will be is if they start to ease off the break uh, a bit, which they slammed really hard. And now as they ease off, I, I think it, Japan can become another interesting market, both from a regulatory and the other key thing is taxation. 
Um, so taxation extremely high in Japan. Um, and if that were to change, my guess would be is that'd be a, a big catalyst for crypto, uh, at least locally, if not globally. All right. Uh, you know, we spoke to you in June when Bitcoin was holding around 30K and you'd said at the time that traders were consolidating and just waiting for a catalyst. And you kind of alluded to it right now. But I just want to be very clear about this. With the negative development since then, what kind of an event would qualify as a catalyst for you now to lift the market from where it is now, which is not 30K and 20K instead? No, fair enough. Um, so, you know, I've historically been bearish all of crypto for, from last year. And so, you know, again, coming from TradFi, trad being a derivatives person, you can see the structure of many of these things being uh, tough to sustain. And again, once it goes into a spiral, uh, it does what it does. So again, you know, watching death spiral convertibles or anything like that, uh, variant swaps in 2008, like many of these crashes, flash crashes are, are quants. Uh, I, what ha, hasn't has been, you know, something we've seen before. Um, so now that a lot of this is really panned out, um, you know, and we've had our various blowups, you have your minor stress, but then comes, you know, the capital injections and, you know, and hopefully if we get a period of quiet summer. Um, I, I don't see it recovering instantaneously, but if volatility is sold for the summer, which if you're in the high mid to mid 70 vol and you're selling that going into the summer and it just stabilizes trade sideways, again, it gives, I think, the market some time to, um, to stabilize and consolidate. Um, and, you know, and many of the uh, issues are being addressed at this point, whether it's, you know, having to cut costs or just increasing risk awareness, improving risk management, or just try to generally improve the trust in the system, um, whether through regulation or just with some stability. Uh, I think all that is happening. So these things, I think, do take time. Um, but, you know, as in crypto, things happen in, in uh, you know, fast forward speed. So, um, you know, it might happen sooner than we think. But, Again, post that 18,000 break, um, you know, we were kind of as a firm looking for some stability um, as we saw a lot of it unwind. Um, turning back to just sort of the Japan situation, um, you know, and the economy, Japan had been wrestling with deflation for, for years and years and years. And now, as I understand it, we're starting to see a little bit of inflation um, in Japan, which is a relatively new phenomenon. Um, the U.S. is grappling with inflation in a very big way. But I'm curious from the Japanese standpoint, are, are you, is the inflationary environment, this relatively new inflationary environment, having any impact on the crypto industry? On the crypto industry, I think... You know, obviously, the biggest component of what's happening is the currency. Um, so as we broke through 122 on our way through 130, 135, and really the key level is probably 145 to 147, um, which then, you you know, if we break through that, you're, it's, uh, you know, you're, you're going from a major multi-decade range and breaking out of that. Um, the implications of that are, you know, household savings in Japan, um, you know, right. Do they sit in ca uh, yen cash? Yeah. Uh, it's one of the few places in the world, if you look at the breakdown of uh, basically household assets, um, it's probably the highest proportion of yeah. cash in the yeah. world. Uh, uh, anywhere. So again, if that shifts, uh, it's a huge move. So in institutional world, you know, there's five to seven large investors uh, in Japan, which, which have a huge impact on global, both fixed income and credit markets. But the household can also have an impact. And so as many have seen what they call the carry trade from 2000, uh, having an impact on global markets and, and carry currencies, um, I think that the next interesting thing could be uh, crypto. Um, and as people start to see the value of their savings to, um, decline, both versus goods as well as other assets, I think it might start to open things up in terms of awareness. And one example, if you look at the price of gold and yen, right? everyone in, in the U.S. probably looking at gold as being a horrible asset uh, in terms of how it's traded, it's basically flat. Um, in yen terms, if you look at it, it's a, it's a pretty steady line up. So again, if you had your savings there. Um, so you wonder if, and this is something we'd also be interested in, you know, we're, we're focused on, is trying to look at accumulation strategies for retail to convert some of uh, people's savings into uh, a long-term asset, um, which as a base currency is USD. Um, and so it's another form of, of savings, which has historically been uh, 
you know, uh, not it uh, hasn't been regulated. Uh, oh, well, sorry. It hasn't been focused on since 2017. And so, again, it has a history in Japan, but I think it, uh, the perception shift could happen as the uh, currency breaks to the upside.